this could just be the game. BG Gaming, they're under the tier 4 towers practically, and this Morbly wants to solo everyone. He's still got Aegis the Immortal. There's the double hop stomp out, but GG is called. BG, they are the superstars. They are your epicenter champions. Well, happy 4th of July, everyone, and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Brody, and that is Marissa, and today we're going to be talking all about the last Dota 2 Major of the season, the Epicenter Major. It was the last chance for teams to earn enough DPC points to get an invite to the International 2019. 16 teams entered, one team left as champion, and the final set of invites were handed out. It sounds like we're setting up a scene for Survivor. Listen, <laughs> like any good Dota tournament, there were insane plays, plenty of highlights, and plays courtesy of the best players in the world, so after we check those out, we're going to break it down with all that epicenter action with the help of caster Austin Capitalist Walsh. But first, let's take a look at them play. They look are, they're getting a good wrap around. Are they prepared for this jump four from flyby? There's the golem drop down as well as Setsu popping the BKB. The false promise comes out in time to keep Cuckoo alive. They're on top of Setsu. Setsu's in trouble. Setsu's dead. He'll buy back straight away. A is going to be the new focus. They've lost the Oracle. He does not have buyback. Tim's dropping down the Echo Slam, but Bonnie's already popped the BKB. Tries to get the stun onto Tim's, but Tim's is out of there. Gabby's in trouble. So is Armel. They've lost Armel. They've lost Gabby. They've lost the three of them. Lanham with the double kill. Miracle walking in, instantly getting locked down, not using the BKB in time. As now Chalice will be focused, Arme still trying to go for it, but GH jumps in, shoots them out, the RP's there, jump in, Miracle gets in the pit, he's able oh, to snatch the Aegis, can he get more out of this, that's the question, he looks towards the Grimstrike, they've got him, three dead on PSG, Weeha surrounds Arme, Arme's locked down, the Bristleback's dead, only the Shaman gets out. Let's see what kind of a lead they can get, Arme will be the dream one to jump, but they know that there's going to be likely backup behind him, they'll try for an easier kill, X Nova's able to slide out to the side, but Chalice! In with the three-man Ravage, OG get absolutely shredded. They get the three, they look to get Seb as well as maybe has the control. Seb tries to run away, but there is no escape. On to two of them with this chain spam from maybe. Snowball is there as well from FY, dodging up the X-Mark combo. BKB's committed, they're straight in, jump four from Army. Oh, there's Red Tips! He gets the black ball! It fights the time for the first Tips! Oh my god, Tips! Oh my! Oh my god! Teams camping the runes here. One arm, They've got the Hex reveal. Jump in. The two double missile. Missile blend on this last combo. It's out. Oh my god. Gabby with the double kill. The soul bite again. Catches the two of them. Chalice is gone. And fly as well. Four dead. As TNC make a beautiful jump there from the high ground. The Hex. This is not as easy as they probably would have hoped it was. Mind Control, they see how low he is. That may be enough for Fade to think about jumping, and he is! He goes he in! He actually got the kill on Roshan and the Aegis of the Immortal! A full steal from Fade! How many, 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 many can you actually <laughs> spawn? I'll keep doing we, it. We need a counter. All right, oh Roshan, here we go, man, from 100 oh. to 0! <laughs> Get blasted! But it seems so damn bloody hard! Miracle has not for kill, even in death he fights it out! Ori wants to get back out again! We have the he ultimate back. connect! He'll have to buy back, he didn't join himself forward on this one! Mind Control needs the attack, needs the opportunity! DY oh, has an ultra kill with the unstoppable! This is like the Burning Crusade! And this could just be the game. BG Gaming, they're under the tier 4 towers practically. And this Morbly wants to solo everyone. He's still got Aegis the Immortal. There's the double hop stomp out, but GG is called. BG, they are the superstars. They are your epicenter champions. Congratulations to Vici Gaming for winning their second major of the season. They absolutely deserve it. Joining us today to break down Vici's win and all the other epicenter action is Capitalist. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. So uh, why don't we just jump into talking about Vici then? Um, this is—they've been so consistent yeah. this season. They've uh, just—they've won uh, a major before. Um, this will be their second one. They're just looking good all around. What have they been doing just to you know keep themselves at this level? Mm. Well, let me tell you right now that Vici Gaming, uh, this is a relatively young squad. Um, two of their core players are quite young in Paparazzi and Yang. Um, I think as a result, sometimes their performance in in individual series can be a little volatile, but huge amounts of talent in this squad. And I think they're only getting more consistent as time goes on. Um, Paparazzi and I would say uh, Yang are superstars in their core roles mm -hmm. and Ori, 
honestly, he's the most improved player for me this season. He is. I I was an Ori hater. I'll tell you guys. I thought Ori was just a Change garbage bin player. I was like, this got you guys got to get him out of this squad. This squad has so much potential. This was last year, and I just thought Ori was like he could only play like two or three different heroes, and that was about it. But uh, he's been a monster this season, and easily my most improved player. Dang, he came to show up and prove Capitalist wrong. I kind of like it. Um, out of the <laughs> other teams at Epicenter, it was Liquid who proved to be the toughest challenge for the Beachy Boys. Their upper bracket match went to three games, and the grand finals went all the way to game five. So how close was Liquid really to overcoming Beachy, and what did Beachy do right to push them over the top? Uh, Team Liquid was definitely quite close. Um, there was... I personally feel like in that best of five, it should have closed out in game four. But again, Vici, maybe just because they're a little bit of a younger squad, they did try and rush things in game four. In fact, there's uh, even some some mentions from the, the Chinese scene. Some of the players, uh, Fade went over it on his stream and he, he went through and just basically called people out uh, of what went wrong in the very last fight in game four and why they lost that game. Um, it's pretty entertaining. He just, he basically said DY uh, really screwed everything up and uh, in a friendly way. He wasn't really blaming <laughs> his teammates. I think they're still quite happy to be winning that tournament. But uh, Team Liquid has definitely uh, tested them quite a lot. Um, and that was a little bit surprising just because this is a liquid squad that has just changed things up yeah. by um, a bit of a infamous kick here. I'm sure mm -hmm. it'll go down in history with the, the kick of Matumba Band and swapping in Weeha. Um, so their performance at this tournament was going to be a bit of a toss up. Yeah, I, yeah. Actually, I actually wanted to talk about that uh, yeah, for a for second because, sure. you know, as, as someone that, you know, I, I, I like to watch the, the big storylines in that. Mm -hmm. And one of the names uh, for me that I've always known always. is Matumbo Man. Mm -hmm. So, see, hearing that he was dropped here and then Weeha took his place, I was like, as, this is uh, for me like a, a crazy out of the blue decision. I'm mm -hmm. wondering if that came as a surprise for everyone else in the scene, too. Uh, I think the people who say it wasn't a surprise honestly didn't put a whole lot of thought into who would be replacing yeah. it because Matumba Man, here's the thing, is, is Matumba Man was integral to their TI win. Um, he, like the, the kind of heroes that he played, mm -hmm. um, the his performance itself at TI, like sometimes Matumba Man doesn't look great um, in, in some of these games, but that's because he's the sacrificial core that has to be put on the altar mm -hmm. so that Mind Control, GH, and Miracle um, can all have good games because they're all kind of greedy players. There's two greedy cores and a very greedy four position. Um, you need to have somebody who is willing to take it upon themselves to say, you know what, guys, I'm not going to have that good of a game. Mm -hmm. And so his role in Team Liquid um, has been a large part of the reason that they've had so much success and um, was definitely a huge huge part in their TI win. So everybody who says, oh, of course, Team Liquid hasn't been, you know, getting the first places that they, of course, they're going to make some sort of change. But kicking Matumba Man was, was definitely the most curious of all of the kicks. And there is really only one replacement I could possibly mm -hmm. see, and that that was Weeha. Um, and it seems like Kuro's choice in the replacement, you know, I, I love Matumba Man. Um, I, I would consider him a friend. I feel very bad about the kick, but considering Team Liquid's performance, the way they look, it seemed to have been the right decision. I mean, Weeha is just a great space maker for Team Liquid and allows Miracle to play a much harder one position carry style role, which I think is what Miracle really needs to be mm. the best player in the world is he needs that extra bit of space. Well, from what I've been told too, it seems like um, Weeha's got a good amount of like versatility uh, in, in what he can do out there. Do you think that's gonna create some really cool comps from this team? Uh, it absolutely will. There is, uh, there's a couple heroes that we haven't seen from Team Liquid pretty much ever. And with bringing in Weeha, that now refreshes some of that mm -hmm. hero pool, adds in certain things like the, the Meepo. They now have uh, two different Invoker players, but Weeha Invoker um, can play this um, very aggressive style that will pretty much uh, take over the map around 20 minutes, and he'll just go and attack the enemy. And that'll create the space that they really need for Miracle to play those harder carries from that one position role. Um, and we have already seen a huge amount of success from his win ranger at this last tournament it seems like that hero is peaking at just the right time or maybe it's just weha uh and his individual skills showing that this hero can be great that sounds like a commercial maybe it's maybelline maybe it's maybe it's just weha maybe it's just weha <laughs> it really is man he's something he's got something magical i'm sure
I just don't like. The, I guys, I don't want to forget about Matumba man. Like what of well, Matumba? You know what's gonna just Where's forget he gonna about? Go? <laughs> what's gonna happen to him? I have feels about this. Well, it it it, I mean, it is a sad story. Um, yeah. You know because he he put it like he helped this team liquid qualify for ti they got invited based mm -hmm. off of the points that they got from this year so um the fact that you know he's not going to have that guaranteed opportunity now mm -hmm. he's already on a team he's on a team called chaos esports club um with a former ti finalist um in misery he's the captain of that squad so um this is a squad that definitely has a good amount of potential but nowhere close to the caliber of what uh team liquid was um, you know, but that's just kind of the way things go. When you when you get kicked this late into the season, there's not going to be a whole lot of prospects available to you because no one wants to make that that change this late into the game. No one wants to have that kind of instability. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Also, shout out mm. to Chaos though because they do have Canadian owners, so like that feels good that the is <laughs> kind of connected to us in a way. Oh, All right. I love it. I, I know. You do know Dota. You know Dota love. entirely. The oh, yeah, North sure. American <laughs> reaches, and it is entirely about appropriating as any kind of clout <laughs> we can get. Any team. I think he lived in America at some point. <laughs> USA. That's, USA. That's what it's. That's Listen, what it is. NA needs all the love they can get. Stop it right now. All right. Looking away <laughs> from the teams that did well at epicenter we have team secret they've dominated the dpc this season but they lost both of their playoff matches to virtus pro and og what happened to secret as do you think this is just like a one-time fluke uh i think so so a lot of people have been asking me about epicenter and what some of the weaker results for the teams mean and here's what i keep saying every single time is that the epicenter results the good results the the teams who went far in the tournament and did well that raises their stock for TI. It, it does mean that they have a, a better chance to make top eight, top four mm -hmm. grand finals at, at TI because of their performance at Epicenter. But a bad performance doesn't take away from that stock. And and the reason that is, is that this is the last tournament of the season. And many of these teams have already gotten their slot to the international. They don't have to worry about things. They don't really need to um, show off any of their strategies. They don't really need to come into this tournament and say we must win this because mm. if anything winning this just puts a target on your back in fact i'm gonna say right now vici gaming by winning the tournament it pretty much in my head means there's no way they're winning the international mm. because the last time a team has has mm. won the tournament right before <laughs> the international uh i think was alliance uh, yeah. which yeah. is to 2013 ti3 yeah. uh i think was the or ti 2014 uh, that was the last team who did something like that. They went to went over to China, won uh, a big tournament there, went to TI, managed to win it, and they were still considered sort of uh, a a team that was eventually going to flop. People would think, oh, they're going to get figured out eventually. Yeah. That, so that, that is a hard thing. So, like, do you do you think uh, for Team Secret, um, this was more of a, a strategy, a strategical loss? What do they, what do they call I, it? Quality loss. I wouldn't say that any of these teams are going like, oh, we're gonna, we're just gonna bow out or anything. But I don't think any of these teams really uh, went into this tournament saying, like, trying their absolute hardest. I think VP yeah. maybe wanted to do a little bit better simply because they're on home soil. But we've already heard like teams like Evil mm -hmm. Geniuses, um, they they bowed out in the bottom bottom of the tournament. And um, Samuel went on his stream later on and said, you know, we just went into that tournament really cocky. And no one is going to do that for the international. Nobody is, because we've all learned from now that yeah. pretty much any team can win. Uh, we have a long history of dark horses being able to make their run through. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. The international is the most competitive tournament in esports history. No, for sure. But capitalists, like, don't you find then because of that, because TI is such just like this Mount Everest of competitions that everything else kind of falls by the wayside. Like, does this not just completely F up the Dota scene in general? It kind of does. Um, there is many, many, many great things about the international, um, but the all the glitz and glamor and all that amazing amount of money, uh, it does overshadow the rest of the season. And it does ruin some storylines. I mean, if I'm on uh, if I'm on the epicenter panel, you know, half the time I'm trying to dance around that topic because yeah. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to mm -hmm. be like, 
well, this team doesn't really care that much about this tournament because the international is coming up. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, what's a million dollars when you can make 25 mil? You, you know, it's like, yeah. that's, that's it's a terrible storyline to yeah. put into any tournament. And um, that is one of the things that the, um, the grandness and the majesty of the international, it just it overshadows the the rest of the year and um and i do think there are some things that i would like to see changed anyway to make the rest of the dota pro circuit um have a little bit more relevance yeah. i would say i mean i guess i guess it one way to get around would be like theory crafting a bit because you you can say okay well this team's not doing too well even though they're number one going into you know the international uh, this is probably what they're going to pull out at the international. I don't know. Maybe that's a, a way to somehow get around it at least. But <laughs> you're casting uh, tips for yeah, right? <laughs> more. That's all I can call some teams to see, see if they have any open uh, coaching slots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brody's <laughs> all over it. He'll drop Rocket League for Dota like that. Yeah, easy. <laughs> I want to talk about NA Dota really in general mm. because we got stuff. Because apart from EG, no other team has really made an impact mm -hmm. internationally this year. What do you see as the current state for NA compared to other regions around the world? Um, it's it, it's rough. Um, North America, the a large part of the problem is, in fact, there is a famous tweet that went out from um, one of the best captains in the scene, PPD. He talked about why the North American region is doing so badly. In fact, uh, I was the one. I, I actually prompted this tweet because I was just kind of like, I was just moaning. I was just like, oh, it sucks watching these NA teams like constantly break up and like it seems yeah. like they have no faith in each other, right? Yeah. Um, but part of the problem is, is the player pool is so small mm. in North America. Um, for Dota 2 and especially for competitive Dota 2 that it you just naturally have to go back to some of the players that you've kicked prior just because there isn't really anybody else um, mm. there's not as much um, young fresh blood like there is in the other scenes um, that's why a lot of our, our teams are outsourcing to Southeast Asia mm -hmm. where there's a lot of fresh talent there's uh, some fresh talent coming out of China uh, as well Europe has a lot of it. Europe is just a very hungry region overall. Um, so because of that, North America and in even South America, you could see um, that we're beginning to have to outsource for mm -hmm. some of our talent. So what 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 do you think is like the best method then for the North American teams? Is it mm. stick together, grow as a team? Is it break up, spread that talent and try to you know train some more people? Or is it going to be the outsourcing? In your eyes, what, what is the best method for the North American teams? Well, see, my original argument was that, um, you know, look at teams like Alliance. Alliance just was the final team to secure their invite to the international mm -hmm. off of the epicenter. They managed to beat Gambit, who was a, a great rising squad. Um, and this is a team that has been together longer than, well, now that Liquid's on, maybe longer than any other team, uh, because they were actually, this is the same squad that they had um, before the previous year's TI, which is kind of unheard of. There's not many teams that bow out and don't do well or don't even qualify for the international and still keep the same squad but Alliance did that and they grew and grew and grew and I feel like they really have gone from a tier two team to a tier one team mm -hmm. so from my perspective I look at that and say look guys you should stick together try and make things work um, if you don't believe in your teammates then this is never gonna work anyway so you have to like build a squad and really believe in it and stick out the whole year with it um, that was my argument but um, you know I did get a couple of pros responding to me um, one of which slid into my DMs and, and reminded me that um, you know forward tried that last year um, forward mm -hmm. stuck it out with SVG um, as their captain they went through the whole entire year not really making a roster change and in the end they failed to deliver mm -hmm. um, and and so part of the reason is with with the international means everything to you that is the worst possible thing that yeah. can happen, right? You stick yeah. with a squad an entire year, and then at the end of the year doesn't go well. It's like that entire time is wasted to you. Mm -hmm. that you just feel like um, you have so many regrets. And yeah. I feel like that's what a lot of these roster changes are about. It's just hope, just making sure they don't have regrets when TI comes. Yeah. I mean, international's uh, effing things up, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird. It's like, I, I kind of want to see a team that's not doing well stick together for maybe a couple of years and see what happens. But obviously, that's as you said, it's, that's, it's a long time. You feel destroyed after, you know, mm -hmm. international. Um, but uh, I want to move on and talk about actually a team that kind of uh, caught us off guard here is uh, mm -hmm. TNC. Mm -hmm. They had a st strong finish at the first major of the year, but then they kind of, you know, dipped down, fell back, and were overshadowed by a lot of other teams. Um, they struggled to qualify a couple majors. Mm -hmm. At Epicenter, 
Center, though, they managed to place fourth, securing their invite to the International 2019. What do you think of these guys? And like, was this kind of a, uh, you know, it was it was always coming, like they were always gonna, you know, swing back up? Mm. Um, there's always a little bit of casting bias. And what I mean by that is that if you are casting a tournament where a team does well, you're naturally going to be singing their praises, right? Because yeah. you got to witness firsthand, um, and and I I got to do that with this um, this tournament, World Electronic Sports Games uh, 2018. It's like the nationals where they get uh, teams that with you know only Chinese players, only mm -hmm. Filipino players, mm -hmm. etc. And doesn't really work too well in Dota, but TNC did very well at the tournament. Managed to place first, beat Keep Gaming, and I mm -hmm. thought they looked really good. So I was expecting them to do well. Um, eventually at the end of the season and to be honest i mean if you know dota 2's history and tnc's history you should be expecting this team to eventually show up um they kind of always have um just because they i mean there was 2016 they managed to beat uh knock og out um in i think 2017 they had a little bit of a rougher year but there's always these tournaments that they turn up i remember dac 2018 they managed to place top four as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a really talented squad. And I feel like a lot of people are giving uh, credit to Heen, who is a former Team Liquid coach, now coaching TNC and saying, oh, he's the reason that uh, everything has changed. But uh, I don't feel that, that strongly about it. Um, okay. You know, I, I haven't talked to Heen about it, but um, I don't feel like he is the main reason that this squad is doing well. I'm sure he helps out a lot, but this is still a really talented roster. Um, TNC, if you go through it, like Gabby, Armel, like both really talented core players who can carry games single-handedly. Tim's is just an amazing four position, probably in my top five of four positions right now. Um, Cuckoo has already shown enough diversity where he's bounced around from being a mid laner to an off laner and in, in a five position all in different points of his career so he's obviously talented and a great captain and then they brought in this new guy in au who does have a lot of history in the southeast mm -hmm. region um and just being a, a good captain so all right uh we're getting close to the end of our time here with you so let's just look forward here for our last topic why don't we just look ahead to what we've been talking about ti9 uh so the 12 invited teams have been set and uh i think as we speak right now we have teams around the world trying to qualify for those last six spots mm. um now we've talked a lot about some of the teams already here ahead of the tournament but what are you looking forward most to when this mm. begins next month what am I looking forward most to? Um, I'm looking forward to some of the teams that um, haven't gotten that much of a spotlight to finally go to the international, um, one of which I'm gonna say their name again. Uh, I really like this Alliance squad. I think right. they're great for Dota 2 just because most Dota players are introverts and uh, not great at doing interviews, but uh, it seems like all of the Alliance players actually and... innervate. Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> esports guys in general, but just trust me, I watch a lot of other esports and nobody beats Dota 2 when it comes to the <laughs> introverted one-worded answers. Okay, fair. So, okay, fair. Um, I, I'm excited for uh, Alliance being able to make it. Um, some of these other squads, like I really hope Gambit makes it out of the CIS region. They are just looking like a hungry uh, young squad that mm -hmm. is going to go. Um, hopefully they make it through the CIS region. And I think they'll do great things at the international if they make it as well. Um, honestly, it's just like a lot of the younger teams. I don't really mm -hmm. give uh, I don't really care so much about the older teams. The uh, I don't care ones, about yeah. Team C Grid or Team Liquid making another one. I, I, I'm more interested in than Young Dogs making it. So you want some, you want some new fresh blood in there, some upset, some excitement. Yeah, some fresh storylines. Absolutely. I mean, hey, we're all down for that, of course. Of course. Cap, uh, thank you so much. We're out of time, but we really appreciate you sharing your insight on Epicenter and Dota with us. Hopefully, we can chat again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, I know how stood up for you guys as much as possible <laughs> and gave you guys a lot of content to talk about. Oh, that was brilliant. He actually uh, made me think I, I knew Dota. <laughs> Brady, you do know Dota. Listen, we love, hey. yeah, I get it. We're plebs for most of the things we do in our lives, absolutely. But we respect. still love and respect Dota. We love and respect those esports that have been mm -hmm. tried and too true from time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Dota is that. But I also feel like uh, Dota's got this big looming cloud that is TI. Okay, well, uh, let's let's talk about that for a second because there, yeah. there is something that's really good okay. about TI that they do better than any 
other esport money and it's that giant prize <laughs> pool that is straight up this is this is insane right now uh, i think it's nearing uh 26 million it's already surpassed the prize pool before yeah. every year it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. uh, and it signs it shows no sign of slowing down i think they still have like 40 days before it closes still like they still have a lot of time for that prize pool to keep getting bigger and bigger yeah. uh, now i have heard some people and even people from the dota scene though say that sometimes this prize pool may not be good and i'm wondering if you agree with that i yeah i uh, completely do you think this agree is a problem that. really oh no i completely okay. agree with it brody like if you are a professional dota player and you know that like okay these are great prize pools that you're playing in yeah. these tournaments throughout the year that should still have importance to you because you're collecting dpc points to yeah. get to this one thing but that's it that's all you're thinking about is the points to get to this big thing because it has the biggest prize pool it has the biggest stage it's the longest running tournament okay. i mean it's just kind of like it's it's a sh it's the shining cloud, I guess, because it's so exciting because you're gonna get all this money from it. But at the same yeah. time, it still is a cloud kind of looming, right? What? Like it, it looms. It could be it could but. be the destruction of Dota. Okay, think about it like that. How can this be long sustaining if this continues to be the way? If teams aren't even playing as well as they could in the tournaments before because they don't want to show what they've got, they don't want to show their stuff off just yet because they want to wait till TI. That's I not okay. I don't know. I mean, I feel like. I feel like it's incredible that it has such a large price pool. Now, I don't think it needs a bigger price pool every year. Like, I won't. And maybe there is a, a thing to say about, okay, well, what if next year it's not as big? Dota's dying, because you know no, people are going to say that. You know people are going to say that, though. The second the, <laughs> any year it drops below the year before or doesn't quite make it, Dota's, Dota's dead game, mm. even though it's still millions of dollars. But that's the only concern I really see with it. Beyond that, though, it's so good because it helps sustain all these other teams. All the teams that are going, there's so much money to spread across but them all, right? it only sustains those teams that make it in that are going if they collect some of that prize pool. If not, they've been they've been well, just trying get to get good. to this moment this it's whole time. It's as simple as that. Get good. That's a lot of teams. 16 teams. Do you, do you need more than that? Like, that's, that's good. Like... Yeah, no, it's good. That's fine. I'm just concerned about the culture that is surrounding Dota if this is the only thing, if this is the one big thing that they're all working toward. More money. Give them more money. Make mm. it 30 mil. Hit it, guys. Oh, my gosh. You know it's going to get to 30 mil next year. <laughs> like, it has to. Yes. The way it's going, it for sure is. Brody, I can't keep talking about money because it's just making me a Fair little jelly. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. You're welcome. Talking Dota, friends. We're smart. Okay. And thanks to Capitalists for joining us too. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can hit us up on all our socials at Squad State. We everywhere, and we see you.